Hi guys. There is someone that I'm going to talk to because I feel like it would be nice to just have a conversation. Um, she's someone that is very calming and a good friend of mine. And I'm really wanting to calm everybody. And I know that this is an anxious day. So I know it could be a lot. But... Um, once a week, get Stacy in. We can ask her some questions. Sorry, I'm just reading your comments. And yes, I'm not presented in the right manner, so sorry, but this has been a long day. waiting. Unable. Hmm. Every time I try to do one of these, it's, it's never quite right with me. Okay, I think we tried. We're trying again. How you can vote is you can actually vote in person. That's what is suggested. Mail-in ballots, I, I don't suggest. You can find um, your local ballot spots and you can vote in person today, right now, whenever. I got a text from my um, Thea, my aunt, and she sent... Um, uh, this message of her and she said it waited she waited 20 minutes I know that some are going to be much longer than that um, but she waited 20 minutes and she voted today um, yeah I know that <laughs> I am gonna laugh somebody is talking about trying to take their mind off of it I understand I'm trying to see if I can get her in, but if you guys have any questions for me about any of this, definitely would recommend it, and I could try to answer as best as I can. I know that um, a lot of voting and a lot of um, these states that also have different um, uh, changing demographics of states like Texas and Arizona and Georgia. Um, so it's really important to just go out wherever you can and do that. If you already have, by the way, that's amazing. And I couldn't be more proud and excited that you voted. Stacy. Hello. I knew we How could are you? Oh, you look amazing. Well, thank you very much. The problem is you're naturally beautiful all the time. Oh, good grief. We're not going to waste any time with that. Well. Um, <laughs> but um, I was just going live with some of my fans and let them know that I want to have like a easy conversation and uh, just maybe put some calm energy out there and ask a few questions that I have and um, that I want to ask you. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I hope you're good, first off. Um, so I have this question for sure. Both Texas and Arizona are on the verge, if not only flipping in terms of presidency, but also delivering Democratic Senate candidates to Washington. Can you tell us about the importance of voting up and down the ballot and who you are supporting? So you're absolutely right. These elections the presidency matters, of course, and we want everyone to vote for Joe Biden. But sending a president to the White House without sending a Senate that can help make their visions a reality means basically we get what we got in 2000 and 
15 and 16 when President Obama couldn't appoint judges, when he couldn't pass legislation. And so what we want to do is make sure that we elect MJ Hagar in Texas. She's running against John Cornyn, who has really done nothing for the last six years. Uh, and we need someone who's willing to actually do their job. MJ is a fighter pilot. She's a mom. She has just done so much work to help women, but also just to help those who have been left behind. The second candidate in Arizona is Mark Kelly, former astronaut, husband of Gabby Giffords, uh, the congresswoman who was shot by basically a domestic terrorist. And they turned their pain and her injuries into the Giffords organization, which has done so much to push for gun safety. And that's a critical issue because Mark is one of those guys who is an independent thinker, but he believes in progress. He's up against Martha McSally. We almost got rid of her last year or two years ago and when Kirsten Cinema beat her. Well, she came back again. This time it's Mark's time, turn to beat her because we need senators from Arizona who not only defend the Latino community there, but also defend the Native American community that's been targeted by Republicans to steal their right to vote. And so we need someone like Mark Kelly who's working with Kirsten in Arizona to defend the rights of all communities, but especially the Latino and the Native American communities in Arizona. Absolutely. Um, can you tell us about what to expect over the next few days, you know, as the election day winds down and states begin the process of counting ballots? So I'll start with this. If you have or know anyone who has an absentee ballot or mail-in ballot, you have to hand deliver it. We know that unfortunately the Postal Service has been weaponized by the GOP. We've tried to take it back, but it's still running slow. And for many people, the only way to get your ballot counted is to take it directly to your county office or county elections office or to a polling place and return it. Okay. But here's what's gonna happen next. Once those ballots are tabulated, those ballots are gonna be received. They're gonna start opening those ballots and tabulating them at the same time that they start tabulating votes for that showed up in person. This will happen after polls close. What that means is that it's going to take some time because polls close in Arizona and in Texas at 7 p.m. But that's central standard time. So I think and I think Arizona is actually Western or uh, mountain time. And so we have to we have to be patient. It's going to take a minute because we have so many people who had to vote early in part because of COVID. But that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing when we have alternatives so that people can protect themselves, protect their neighbors, protect the community. But it's gonna take longer to count those ballots. That means that we probably won't have a firm answer tonight. Usually we get a projection that says, here's based on all the data, here's who we think won. But the right. reality is nobody knows until usually two to three days later for sure. Mm -hmm. What we want in the absence of a landslide where it's completely unambiguous, what we have to do is be patient the way I say it is we have to ask for slow and right rather than fast and wrong. Because right. if we get a quick answer, it could miss thousands of people, in fact, millions of people who voted by absentee, who need to fix their ballots, called curing it. Those are often Latino voters, Black voters, mm. Native American voters who, who are routinely treated more harshly if they make a mistake. But we've gotten good laws on the books so that they have a chance in some states to go and fix their ballots. But that means it's gonna take longer for us to get a firm answer. But that's a good thing because a delay means the process is working. If they just speed through it, that means some people are gonna lose their right to vote and that's not the outcome we want. Right, exactly. That's, that's, so, that's very true. Thank you for um, answering that question. Um, so, but on that, we're, we're on the cusp of major victory due to the changing demographics of states like Texas, like mine, Arizona, and Georgia. Can you talk to us about the importance of people of color turning out today? So I know there's a lot of suspicion or cynicism about, from black and brown communities about voting. If you're black, if you're Latino, if you're Asian American, if you are in, if you're Native American, you have seen your votes be discarded and your voices being trampled. I, I know it, I grew up in Mississippi. And so I'm very aware of this, but here's the difference. When I was growing up, 
there weren't enough of us. We could demand what we wanted. We could fight for it. We could march for it. But we always had to rely on other people joining us for our voices to matter. And what's happened over the last 20 years is there's so many more people of color who have common beliefs. We may not have a common ancestry, but we have a common history and yeah. we can have a common future. And what I've tried so hard to do, the reason, Selena, I love working with you is that I know that the success of the black community is intertwined with the success, the, the success of the Latino community, which is intertwined right. with the sex of the Native American community. And we have one of the fastest growing Asian populations in the South, in Georgia. And wow. for me, it's always about how do we link arms and take our differences and use them to build a common future. Here's the way I put it. Demography changes fast. Politics changes slow. But when demography and politics meet, that's when destiny happens. And we're at that moment. There are more young people of color than ever before in our history. And I'm Gen X. I'm not gone yet. So we can take all of these young people, all of those folks who are like myself in middle age, all those folks who've been waiting for decades and together, if we vote, we can actually not only change who goes into office, but we can hold them accountable for what they do once they get in. And yes. that's really the power of who we are and what's at stake. That I think a lot of people don't, you know, realize that or recognize that. And that's so important that just equally what's going on in the inside is beyond what's on the outside. So, yes. Um, I wanted to ask as well. So I voted. I voted early. If folks have already voted and they're getting anxious about awaiting for the results, um, what can we, you know, like, how can we be involved in the fight to ensure that every vote is counted? So right now, the best thing every person can do is call five people and just check, see if they voted. And don't let them say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ask them how, because usually right. if you ask how, we'll get the truth. The <laughs> people right. say they voted just to get you off the phone. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm moving. I'm, I'm moving from one house to another. And I've been, I've spent part of my, like, brief snippets of time, I've had to call different service providers. But the first question I ask after they answer my questions, the first thing I say is, have you voted yet? And I had one young woman who said, absolutely. She told me she got her son to vote. And another young woman said, no, I didn't vote because I'm politically neutral. And what I wanted her to understand is you may be neutral, but politics aren't. Right. And what people, what politicians decide affect you, whether you voted for them or not. So why not add to your odds and vote? And we can spend our time right now calling through our friends. Don't randomly call AT&T, but call your <laughs> friends, call right. your family. And even if you think they voted, things happen. People get sick. People get distracted. They had a bad day at work. Call and make sure they have a plan to vote, that they know where to go and vote, and just encourage them and say, don't, don't lecture them. Ask them, will you go and vote because it helps make our lives better? Yeah. It won't it's hurt our you. Future. It is. It, it won't hurt you not to vote. I mean, it won't hurt you to vote, but it will hurt you if you don't vote. Yes, I agree. Lastly, I need this, and I'm sure a lot of people need this. Uh, a lot of us are rightfully anxious at this moment. Um, can you give us three practical tips to soothe our worries as we head into election night? Number one, no one knows what they're talking about if they <laughs> So I don't care if they show you 12 charts and they have really, really pretty heat maps and needles that spin around counterclockwise. No, they don't know. They don't mm. know if we haven't closed the polls. So number one, nobody knows what they're talking about. Right. Everyone is pontificating is the nicest way to say it, but there's a more vernacular way that I'm not allowed to say on, on you know, in public. So that's number one. Number two, if we have done what we can, that's all we can do. It's kind of a Zen thing, but just remember we've done our part. If you've called those five people, if you voted yourself, if you volunteered, if you did Instagrams, if you did what, Selena, what you've been willing to do, if you've done something, then you've done your part. And what we can do is prepare ourselves for either joy or work, because that's the reality. The third reality is this. I grew up in the South, a Black woman who grew up working poor in the Deep South. 
we can survive anything. We don't want right. to have to survive. Anything. We want to thrive. And that's why yeah. we're working so hard. But if the worst outcome is what becomes the answer, I'm living proof. You can get through it. I spent two years ago in three days, I lost in public to a man who controlled the outcome of the election, who has denied health care to the people of Georgia, who has been horrendous in terms of leadership on COVID, and who basically is just mean. And everything in me wanted to curl up. But what I can tell you is that fight number one, it's who it gets things done. And because I may not have become governor in 2018, but I was part of making the right to vote a conversation in 2020 right. and making it more fair than people expected. And that means that no matter what the outcome is, I mean, by God, it better be Biden. But if it's not, we will survive that and we will work even harder to make the change that we need to make because we don't elect saviors, but we also don't have to live under tyrants. We have options. And if that becomes the issue, we will redouble our efforts and we will fight for our democracy for another day. But I believe that we will win. I truly do. Absolutely. I can't thank you enough for getting on this live with me really quick. Um, I wanted something calm and I wanted you to just tell me some stuff. And um, I hope some people were on and can feel a bit, you know, calm as well. Um, but I'm sure I'll speak to you soon. You're my girl. Selena, anytime, anywhere. One last thing I'll say is, guys, if you have any questions, go to 866-OUR-VOTE. Go to IWillVote.com or go to VoyAVOTAR.com. V-O-Y-A-V-O-T-A-R.com to get information in English or Spanish. IWillVote.com or VoyAVOTAR.com or dial 866 our vote and we will be there to make certain you have all the information you need to change the world. That's perfect. Thank you so much. Take care. Have a great day. You too. Bye.